How's it going, everybody? This is George Almazan with Cisco Systems. And today I would like to take a moment to talk to you a little bit about WebEx Event Center. Now, a lot of us are probably already using some form of WebEx or another type of product that's very similar to what you might know as WebEx Meeting Center. Now, WebEx Meeting Center, I think, covers probably 70% of the use cases of WebEx. And really what WebEx Meeting Center does and is good for is for getting a small group of people, 100 people or less, to meet up in a single room for scheduled meetings, for team meetings, for scheduling with customers, things of that sort, um, where everybody can you know pass the ball and do things like share content, video, audio, information. WebEx Meeting Center is just perfect for that kind of small group meeting thing. However, there are some cases where we're running into things like board meetings, city council meetings, where we need to be able to provide the public a way to do things like two-way audio or one-way audio, um, do things like chat, question and answer, things of that sort where you may want to have a little bit more control over what the attendees are able to do. So for instance, we have a feature that allows you to be able to control whether or not somebody can get in and out of audio. So in WebEx Meeting Center, although you are able to control when to mute somebody, unfortunately, Meeting Center doesn't prevent the person from unmuting themselves. But that is something that you can control within an event center. And thankfully, Cisco right now is providing a 90-day uh, trial for pretty much all of WebEx. That's Meeting Center and Event Center, support center, training center, everything for 90 days. So I wanted to just take a moment and go over uh, a couple of the things to keep in mind with WebEx Event Center. And for right now, I wanted to uh, just kind of provide an outline that I think you guys could could, could use and, and be able to, to utilize for creating these meetings. The first piece is just to go over the setup of a event. And that is for the host specifically. The only person that needs a WebEx account for an event is a person who's going to host the meeting. Nobody else technically needs one. The next thing would be for the panelists. Now, the panelists are the people that are actually going to be presenting content, video, and audio to the attendees. And the attendees would be the third component of this video. So let's go ahead and get into it. This, what you're seeing right now, is specifically the personal meeting room or meeting center. This is a URL that I can that I can use. It's unique to me and I can give it out to my customers or to my uh, my team members whenever I need to have a meeting with them. Think of it as, as like a personal office, right? That can fit up to 100 people. Now, if you need something that is more robust in terms of control uh, and also can, can serve up to 1,000 attendees, then WebEx events is probably what you're going to do. If you sign into your domain, in my case, this is stx.webex.com, it would be different for you. If you need a trial, let me know. I can spin one up for you um, if you're one of my customers. Now, WebEx events is down here in the bottom left. You click that. And from here, the host can go ahead and schedule an event here on the left side. This is where you want to go to. From here, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can just set up a test event. Now, normally you want to set up an event um, pretty early ahead of time, right? You don't want to do this the day of, a couple of minutes before. In fact, uh, you want to make sure that you probably schedule your meeting way ahead of time, right? Maybe even a week, a couple of days before the meeting. Um, one of the things that I like to do is to remove registration. You may or may not want to do that. Um, but in order to make it as simple as possible for your attendees to join, uh, removing registration is one of the things that I find um, most useful. You will also set up an event password. Uh, you set up the time and the time zone, the duration. Here you will set up the audio conference settings. Now, if you need two-way audio as an option, I would recommend to leave everything as is here, right, where you have the global call in numbers, meaning you can call in uh, to the WebEx with your phone if you'd like. What I like to do is to have it call me instead, though, where 
you actually give Webex your mobile number and they call you back, right? Rather than you having to dial in and put in your attendee code and your PIN and all that stuff, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you definitely want to mute all people upon entry uh, upon the entry, right? And um, you don't want to have a tone every time somebody mutes and unmutes because that can get pretty uh, pretty obnoxious really quickly. Now, if you just need to provide one-way audio, another option is just to uh, do provide attendees using audio broadcast. So if you don't need anybody at any point in time to ever talk back in terms of the, your attendees, just provide the audio broadcast, and you should be good there. I'm going to leave this all the same, though. Here you can update, uh, or I should say, put in a description for the event. You can go and upload a PDF if you have something like that. Um, usually, uh, you do provide something here. Everything else you kind of leave the same. If you have a list of your attendees' emails, you can do that. In most cases, what I'm finding with cities and K through 12s is w this is actually just uh, left blank because all we want to do is just provide the public with a link, right? Not not send them all of an email, right? We we don't usually have you know parents' emails or the public's email address, right? So you might want to just keep that blank depending on your use case. But if you have a mailer of your customers or something like that that you want to share that with, you can definitely do that here by creating an, an invitation list. Uh, your panelists, you want to make sure that you invite your actual presenters, your panelists, to to the event to join with you. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and um, add myself, but instead I'm going to invite my um, Cisco.com email address. Um, go ahead and place that in here. Add to invitation list and hit invite. And so now I just need to add the password. This has to be different than the attendee password. So I'm just going to do a super secret password that doesn't really matter here. And you can go ahead and send out email reminders, uh, registration reminders if needed. Um, I You can go through that and, and figure out what's best. Uh, you can send out one couple minutes before uh, follow-up emails, that kind of stuff. I'm just going to keep that the same and schedule the event. And once that's scheduled out, you can go ahead and I would say send out an email to your host and your panelist and and your attendees if, if applicable, and then send it now. So go ahead and send that out. And I can see I actually got the email here. Now, you'll see here is the test event. Uh, this is the event. Now, let's just say that you've scheduled the event, but it's not for a couple of days, right? So you go back to your WebEx, you hit your WebEx events here on the bottom left, you're going to be here and wonder, where is my event? N no need to worry. All you got to do is go over to site events and site event number three, right? I, I created one called site event two, so I'm going to use that one. Uh, for the remainder of this video. Um, and notice here, you have all of the information that you you uh, that you set up, right? And now what you got to do is go ahead and take, take note here of these two addresses. The one that you want to share out to your public, um, whether that be through Facebook or any other public venue, uh, um, your way of communication, this is what you want to send out, right? And uh, here is the event password as well. So I want to make this extremely clear that when you are sharing out your attendee URL, you also want to make sure that you are sharing out the event password, which in this case is Cisco123. When a new attendee is uh, clicks on that link and they do not have a WebEx, they're going to need to provide a, a name, an email, as well as, a, as the event password which again is Cisco123. Without it, they will not be able to join the meeting. So whether you are propagating this out to Facebook or to your website so that people can see it, uh, make sure you got to have that URL, you got to have the event password. Uh, what you do not want to share out is the panelist password. The panelist password is, is uh, only for panelists, not for uh, the actual event um, attendees. So because you sent out emails to everybody, I want to go ahead and show you what those emails look like.
But just keep in mind that if you're a host, you can go ahead and just start the, the event from here with the start now button. And so that's actually what I'm going to do here. Um, the host will have received an email and it would be pretty simple. It would say something like, uh, this is the event. It, it integrates with your calendar. Uh, and then there's a start event button. I'm just going to do it from here for simplicity. And here I'm just, I'm not going to connect the audio, but this is where you can set up the audio stuff. So you can say, uh, connect using the computer. That's what I would recommend. I would definitely recommend that, um, your host and your panelists use their computer for, for audio, uh, make sure that's all set up, make sure, um, they have, uh, headsets, uh, no feedback or anything like that. They have headphones, that kind of stuff. You can set up your speakers. In this case, I want to use my Yeti microphone so the audio comes through. I want my Yeti microphone as the audio source as well. You can test it there. And then you can also um, uh, use your camera if you wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to leave everything muted. And for now, I'm just going to disconnect audio and start the event uh, just to prevent any feedback problems here. Um, so this is it, right? On a on a Mac, it's going to look like this. It's going to be pretty similar on the uh, uh, on Windows as well. The first thing that you need to do is go to event and hit start practice session. Now, practice session is really neat because what this allows you to do is pretty much get together in a group with your panelists without being seen by the attendees. So if there's ever a moment within the the meeting where the panelists need to have their own discussion privately, the host can just go to event and and pract and go to practice session and they'll be able to do that. This is also the first thing that you want to do in order to start the meeting cuz you want to make sure that all of your panelists come in and you set them up without any issue. Now you you go down here, you'll see the Participants, you want to make sure that that's showing so that you see all the panelists and all the attendees that are coming on. Now, a really important thing to note here is pretty much for every event, you want to ensure that that all of your panelists join at least 30 minutes before the actual event starts, right? You can start the event before the event starts, right? Um, let's just say this started at three o'clock or 315, you would want people to start joining at about 245 from your panelist group. That way you can take care of any audio, video issues or anything like that, right? You want to make sure that everybody's properly set up, maybe even as far back as 45 minutes to an hour. If you have people that, you know, have never used WebEx, you want to make sure that you test run this uh, prior. And even if you guys are extremely comfortable, I would say, you know, 20 minutes before you got to have everybody at least logging in and getting ready to go. So just my recommendation there. Make sure first thing you do, you go over to event practice session. And here the host can also make some modifications to what you want the panelist and the attendees to be able to do. So you'll notice right now I have the Q and A, I have the chat, which I just toggled here. Now let's just say that there is, um, another means by which attendees will submit their questions. You don't need them to put anything to chat. You don't need them to have a Q and A. On a Mac, you go over to WebEx events preferences. On Windows, you would actually go over to event and there's an option setting. So you would actually see options here somewhere. Uh, again, on the Mac, it's under the preferences tools. And here, what I would recommend you to do is turn off everything that you don't absolutely need. So in most cases, I would say just keep the video on. The video is only for the panelists, so the attendees cannot enable video, which I'll show you later. And notice how when I did that, the chat went away, the Q&A went away. Nobody can see it. Nobody can control it or enable it except the host. Now, let's just say there is a 10-minute section where you're going to have Q&A from the public. You can go back to your preferences or to your options, go to tools, and you'll be able to enable chat and Q&A. Let's just say enable chat uh, Q&A. That you will now be able to see. And your participants will be able to see that no matter what device that they're on. Whether it be an iPhone, whether it be an Android or um, 
or on a on desktop computer, right? So that is uh, pretty much the control that that uh, that a host is going to have. The last thing that I want to make sure that I touch up on is right when the meeting is going to start. Every all your panelists are in. You guys are ready to go. All you got to do is go over to event and practice session and start the recording. You want to make sure that you record so you can have this recorded for and posted on your website. And all you got to do is just let that run. Now, another use case here is let's just say that you needed the um, you needed to have some kind of private meeting between the panelists in the middle of the meeting in the middle of a board meeting or city council meeting. All you would need to do as a host is go over to um, event, start practice session, and you'll notice here that you're going to get the option to either pause your recording, which you probably want to do if you don't want this private session to be recorded, um, or you can continue recording. I'm going to pause it, and you'll notice that you get a little uh, signal here that it is paused, and again, you're in a practice session. All of the panelists have their discussion. They talk about what they need to in private. Once they're ready to come back to the attendees, all you got to do is go back to event and practice session. And now you'll notice that the event is recording once again. And you are back in the room with all the, all the attendees. It's actually pretty neat. And I'm going to show you exactly what the attendees see on their end when you're in a practice session, which is really nothing. But I will show that to you uh, a little bit further further along. But this is really what you need to know about the uh, being a host. And um, next, I'm going to go ahead and cover what you see as a panelist. All right, everybody. So this is the email that the panelists got. So I got an email from my personal email and sent over to my Cisco email. And notice how this has less information than the host, right? I'm, I, all I have is join the event rather than start the event. And I have my panelist password. Please do not share this panelist password. So I'm going to go ahead and join the event. And this will just take a couple seconds. And you can go ahead and put in your, your name here. I'm going to go um, George number two. <laughs> and uh, put the email address. In this case, it was joelmazah at cisco.com. And the password is already there. So I'm just going to start. And join. So it's pretty nice that the password is already automatically put in there for you. So you don't have to remember. Uh, once again, I'm going to go and disconnect the audio because I don't want any feedback. And all the panelist needs to do is join the event. And so that is, uh, that is that. So the panelist is now in. And you'll notice that here the George number two, that's me. <laughs> and that is the host, which is my personal email address. And from here, the panelists are able to communicate. The host on my other screen right now, I'm going to go ahead and just go into a practice session. And you'll notice that here on my screen, I'm also in a practice session. And here you'll be able to communicate with George Almazan, George number two, George number three, all the ones that come up. Um, and this is what you want to do before the meeting begins. So here you will notice that you do not have access to chat or Q&A or anything like that. And that's because the host has that disabled. So if, I, if the host on my other machine went to event, options, chat, apply, okay, you'll notice that now George has the option to do a chat. Likewise, if I go back to my host machine and I want to do q and I can open up the Q&A and you'll notice now I have an option for Q&A as well, which is pretty neat. And again, I'm going to go back to my host machine and remove Q&A, remove, remove chat, apply, and now that's no longer there. So that's pretty cool that it pretty much happens in real time where I'm talking, right? So that's neat. Um, the panelists themselves, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, the same way, if you want to modify the audio connection or the camera connection, you can do that here. You'll notice that right now the host is the uh, has the ball, right? If the host is going to be presenting something, they need to have that ball. If, let's just say, George number two needs to present something, 
you will need to take the ball away from him. So the host has the ability to drag and drop this ball from George Almazan to George number two. And then notice now George number two has the ball and now I'm able to share content, which is this button right here. All right, so that is pretty much everything you need to know about the panelist. The other thing to keep in mind is the notice how the panelist does not have access to end a practice session and does not have the ability to change out the um, the tools. The tools would be like the chat and the Q and A. Uh, so keep that in mind that only the host has permission to do that. Now, if I go over to uh, this guy, which is on my other screen, I could actually change the role of somebody. So you don't see it on my screen right now, but as a host, I'm able to go over George number two here, right click, and I could make that person a host if I wanted to. So I can right click on him, make him a host, and notice that now I am the host of the event on this guy. And from here, I get all the access to end the practice session, to go to preferences, go to tools, and, 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 and um, disable or enable whatever I'd like. But in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and make George Almazan the original uh, host. And you'll notice now if I go over to event, I can no longer end practice session. So now uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, go to my iPhone and I'm going to uh, try and log in as an attendee. All right, so now one of the things that I wanted to reiterate here was in order for the attendees to join the meeting, you got to make sure that they have the correct URL. As I mentioned before, the one that you want to provide onto Facebook or your public platforms is the event address for attendees, which is this one right here. Now I've already sent it over to my iPhone and what I want to go ahead and do now is just open up a web browser, let's put it in, and you'll notice that I have the join button there, pretty simple. Just hit the join button. It's going to ask me to open an application. If your device does not have WebEx installed, you will need to download it. So you go there, download it, I already have it. Go back and you join via the installed app. And from there, if you're a new user, you're going to be asked for your name and your email address, as well as the event password that I talked about earlier. So you type that in here and the attendee will click OK and OK and you should be good from there. And I already have WebEx installed so now you will see there and, and I have actually have it set to automatically call me. I'm gonna d deny that call in the, at the moment. So now you'll notice that the panelists are now in a practice session, which is pretty interesting, right? Notice how I am in that practice session at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and on my host computer, I'm going to go ahead and go to event and I'm going to end the practice session. And then immediately you're going to see that now I can actually see what's going on here. So if there's any sharing of content or anything like that, I can go ahead and do that so I can share content, I can uh, talk and you'll be able to see my screen here, pretty easy, just stop and you can carry forward with your, um, with it. So it's asking me right now if I wanted to um, add the audio, I can go ahead and do that for, because it's not allowing me to. Now you'll notice here that on my attendee here uh, on, on the computer screen, You'll notice that I am not able to unmute myself. So you see here, I'm, I'm clicking on the unmute button. And as an attendee, I'm not allowed to do that, which is exactly what you want. And I'm trying to show my, uh, my video and it's not letting me do that, which is awesome. That's exactly what you want. I'm going to go ahead and move the host, um, go ahead and move the host information. Uh, over to George number two, so you can see this. I am now the host. I want to go ahead and allow, so I'm going to make this a little bit easier to see this way. 
Now, right now, you can see that there's no option for chat or anything like that. I, I can click on Q&A, but nothing comes up for me. Um, so I want to, let's just say there's a portion of it where we want to do a Q&A. So the host can then go over to, on a Mac, go to Preferences, open up the Q&A, click OK. And now if I am a participant or an attendee, I can go here and now notice how the Q&A section is open. So I can ask a question and I can ask um, something simple. What's the weather like today? And so now you'll notice that I have the weather, right? <laughs> or <laughs> not the weather. I have the question here. And in order to answer the question, it could be answered by any of the panelists. And I can say something like it's, um, I don't know, 90 degrees outside right now outside and send that off. I can also right click it and say I answered it verbally. You can also assign it to somebody or defer the question completely. It's pretty neat here, right? And the other thing that I can do as the host is I can take a look at the attendee list. And let's say that there is an account here. Um, that's George Amazon. And they have maybe um, something to say. So I can find them and I can unmute them. And you'll notice now, um, allowed to say something and I can unmute myself. When before, I'm gonna mute myself here and now I can no longer unmute, which is exactly what you want. You wanna be able to have that control now, let's say you have an attendee, and for whatever reason, you do want to avoid this scenario, though. You, want, you need to make them a panelist. You can go ahead and do that here. And look at that. I have somebody calling me. <laughs> but uh, you can also expel that person. So let's just say this person said something they shouldn't have said, or for whatever reason, uh, their name or something is um, inappropriate. You can go ahead and expel them, and I've been removed from the event. And it's just as easy as that. Um, so hopefully you guys found something useful from this video and from this, uh, from this recording. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks so much and have a great day.